Hello guys, what is going on? In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to make an explosive bow with a custom recipe and custom events in spigot coding. This will be for 1.19, but it should work, I think, up uh, down until 1.16, but I would just try this to code it on 1.19. Okay, so the first thing we want to do, we want to go ahead and get our uh, recipe set up. So we'll go, and the way I like to do this is we set up a class with um, all of our recipes. In this case, I'm just going to do one, or you set up a class with a whole bunch of recipes. If you want to be more advanced, you can use a configuration file to store your recipes. I'm not going to get into that today because that's a lot of work. And if you're just starting out, it's you shouldn't worry about it. So this this is like the easiest way and one of the neater ways to set up your recipes. So we'll do public. Um, explosive bow recipe. We're creating a constructor uh, for our class right now. Then we want to go ahead and get a private variable of our main class, which is called test plugin. Not that. And we'll just call it main, I guess. Then in our constructor, we also want to get test plugin as main. And then we want to set this dot main equal to main. And now we have a variable called main. Uh, which is basically just an instance of our test plugin class here. So it can allow us to do all sorts of, I don't know if you want to do uh, main dot, you need to do it in a method, but you can do public void init, which is our next method. And then you want a, a call init from here. So let's do our uh, thing here, public, and you want to return a shaped recipe explosive bow and here I can show you we can do like main dot get config which is stuff you can only do from the class that extends Java plugin here okay so what do we do first we first want to create our item stack so we'll do item stack we'll just call it item equals I would recommend uh, keeping it simple because you already have what you're creating here in the method name I'd recommend naming your item in the method name here and not doing like explosive bow and then uh, more complicated things later you can call it item stack if you want, but I just call it item. Equals new item stack material dot uh, bow. There we go. And then we want to go ahead. If you want to make it have like an enchant glint, which is like that shiny purple stuff that uh, appears whenever you enchant an item, uh, you can do this item dot add enchantment enchantment dot luck, and we'll just do one. And now it has a luck enchant. Then we want to do, we want to go ahead and get the item meta. So item meta meta equals item dot get item meta. And you could call this item meta, but if you call this explosive bow, then you're probably going to call this explosive bow meta. And it just gets really annoying to type, so I'd keep it short and concise. First thing you want to do is if you don't want to people to see that your bow has the luck enchantment on it, you want to do meta dot add item flags. Item uh, flag dot hide enchants. So now you won't be able to see this luck enchantment anymore. You won't be able to see any enchantment, but since this bow already has an enchant, you um, you can't enchant it anyway, but you can anvil it. But that's not an issue we're worrying about right now. We just want to make a fun explosive bow. Don't do this if you don't have this. These two, add enchantment and hide item flags for hiding enchants, don't worry about it if you don't want to have a shiny bow. If you do want to have that, then you can follow. You can do that. Next, we'll do meta dot uh, set display name. This is self-explanatory. Um, it's basically what you're gonna see when you hold over the atom. Instead of saying bow, it's gonna say explosive bow. Then you can do meta dot uh, set lore, and I do arrays dot as a list. We'll do something simple. A uh, chat color dot Ray arrows not from this bow explode on impact. And we'll do another line uh, red, I don't know. And we'll do uh, very dangerous. And there's our lord. And then you should do meta dot set unbreakable only if you want the bow to not uh, break at all. And then we do item dot, um, dot set item meta meta. Okay, the last thing we need to do is go ahead and get the shape recipe to return, because this uh, method here returns a shape recipe. So 
Then we're gonna do a shaped recipe recipe equals new shaped recipe new name spaced key. Pass in our main instance. We'll call it explosive bow. And then we'll pass in our item. Okay, so that was a lot. But here's basically what I'm doing. I'm creating a shape recipe object uh, by using the new keyword. The shape recipe object requires a namespaced key and an item stack as the result. So we need the namespaced key to basically identify what item it is and then the item stack. Because let's say you're just adding different ways to craft the same vanilla item you need to have ways to identify them. You can have two crafting recipes for gold blocks, let's say, but they need to be different somehow. So you need to create a unique namespace key. And the namespace key requires an instance of main and then the key itself. And this key can also be, this key can be, has to be a string here. Okay, then we're gonna do recipe.shape. So recipe.shape is probably one of the most intuitive parts this it is um it's the crafting grid it's really simple so uh essentially we're looking at here is you're looking at all three rows so this is row one row two row three and each of these spaces is one of the three slots in our uh, crafting grid so let's say we just want to make this a simple thing. Let's we'll do TNT on the top, TNT bow TNT, and then TNT in the bottom. It doesn't have to be like this at all. You can do whatever you want. Um, I, what I would recommend is if you can, try and make the first letter of the item that you want in that slot correspond to this letter here, which is considered the key. I'm going to do recipe.set ingredient now. Key T. Now you can set this to dot anything you can use any of these items here you can make t stand for composter and then you can use eight composter and then whatever you make b but we're going to use tnt uh because that's what we want to use uh, recipe.set ingredient um and we'll do b here and then again you can do anything but i'm just going to do bow cool and we want to return recipe that's it i'm going to do go here bucket dot add recipe and then explosive bow. Bucket that add recipe requires a shape recipe uh, as a parameter, and this is what this method gives us along with giving the item its special stuff. Okay, now that we have our recipe registered, we want to go to our main our main thing here, and we just want to do new explosive bow recipe, and then pass in an instance of main, which is this. And as you can see, everything's working properly as it should. Okay, now in our projectile impact listener, which is a class that'll basically, it, it's um, another class we have here, which implements listener. The listener is basically the magic, the juice of the Spigot API. This is how you make custom things happen. Like when the arrow hits anything, it'll go boom, it'll explode. This is how you do it. There's tons of uh, methods I'll show you. Uh, we can do public, avoid, you can call this whatever you okay. First, you wanna annotate with that event handler this will basically make it fire anytime an event happens like a person breaks a block something gets attacked somebody shoots a bow even stuff that you wouldn't think of like a hopper transferring an item into another hopper or a chest like everything and we'll do a public void and then we'll do i'll just call this arrow explode this can be anything but then if you look at event you can see oh, let's do i don't know projectile hit event launch events you can do entity damage by entity explode a lot of things so we're gonna do um pro uh, projectile hit event obviously and we'll use the event variable so how this works is the add event handler annotation it'll always pass the parameters that it needs into this method so now anytime an arrow lands this method will be called with the event object and its variable. Okay, so the first thing we need to do, we'll come, we're gonna do some guard clauses. So what's a guard clause? A guard clause are basically, probably most likely, if statements that stop a, that stop code from executing 
further if a condition is not met. So, basically what I'm saying is, let's say you have code, and instead of using if statements and then if it's true, go to the next, and then do more if statements, it, it would look something like this. And your code gets really hard to read already, because your code's going to fly all the way over to the right side of your screen. Instead, what you could do is you could do if not that condition, and then just return. And that way, your code would be all on the same line. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to check first if event.getEntity.getShooter uh, is an instance. Uh, we're going to check if this isn't true first, so... instance of a player and if it's not we just want to return and then next we want to check if not event.get entity instance of arrow so we're checking if First, if the event isn't shot, if the arrow isn't shot, or whatever isn't shot by a player, return. Then we want to see, okay, if it was shot by a player, did he throw an ender pearl, a snowball, a bottle of enchanting? If it wasn't any one of those, if it was any one of those, then return. We're doing these to basically save uh, space, save readability, but also it makes our code exit early rather than having to continue going through if statements. It'll just stop. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and get the player variable. So player, we'll name it player. We gotta cast it. Casting is basically a type conversion. So it's basically how you change something that isn't explicitly that variable to something. We're gonna go event.getEntity. And since player extends entity, you can cast it. But make sure that you first check if it is a player. Otherwise, you'll get a null pointer exception or some other exception, and then it won't work. Okay. Then you want to go ahead and do another guard clause if player.get inventory.get item in main hand get item meta dot get display name dot equals and then we want to do chat color dot light purple explosive bow and we want to check not again so not we're checking if the player's item that they were holding whenever they did this isn't this then stop then return if the shooter was a player and they shot an arrow and they were holding the explosive bow then we can do the fun stuff so then we can do um we'll do arrow arrow equals event dot get entity and we'll have to cast it to arrow since we already checked for an arrow here okay then we want to go ahead and do arrow uh, get world dot create explosion arrow dot get location and we'll say it's a four, uh, four power. So it's the same as a piece of TNT hitting the ground. And we want to go do arrow dot remove. And that's it. That is our event handler done. So we want to go ahead and just do bucket dot get server dot get plugin manager dot register events new um, projectile impact listener and then this. And that's it. Our plugin is done. There's nothing else for us to do. We have our code here. I'm going to go ahead, export this, put it on my server, and then I'll be right back. Yeah, a quick error I forgot to mention. I completely forgot about this. You have to do add um, unsafe enchantment for luck, and then it'll work properly. And also, one more mistake I made was when you're getting the player variable, you have to get the shooter, not just the entity. So as you can see here on my server, so we're going to go ahead and craft the bow now. Um, as you can see, putting at and around it, we get our bow, and we hit the ground, it explodes. And yeah, you can fire as many arrows as you want from this, they'll all explode. I hope you guys enjoyed this simple tutorial. If you find this video helpful, leave a like, subscribe, I'll be making more of these in the future, and I'll see you guys later.